I have this incense cedar tree that came down a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago, well before I had a mill. But cedar is supposed to be rot resistant, right? If that's the case, it should still be solid inside. I should still be able to mill some good boards out of it. Let's cut into it and see what it looks like inside, see if it's worth salvaging. It's a good sized tree on the butt end, but it's easier to get it from the top end first. So let's cut into the top end, see how that end looks first. Let's get the tractor in here, get these moved apart so we can see what the ends look like. Let's take a look at the end of these logs and see what they look like. Isn't cedar supposed to be rot resistant? A lot of people pay a whole lot more money for cedar because it's supposed to be rot resistant. They use it for outdoors, if it's gonna be out in the weather, and it's very common to use it for garden beds where there's gonna be soil contact. But this log has been suspended up high off the ground and most of it is rotten just after a few years. Let's take a closer look. That's all punky. If you notice, all the rot is in the sapwood. The heartwood, that's totally solid. I think I have a leaky hydraulic valve. The forks are slowly starting to tip. This thing's gonna dump here in a bit. People will pay a lot more money for cedar because they believe it's going to be rot resistant. In a lot of cases it is, but there are different types of cedar. And to make it more interesting, there actually are no native cedars in North America. What we call cedars here are not actually cedars. Up oh, there it goes. What we call eastern red cedar is actually a juniper. Western red cedar, the more common cedar on the west coast, is a cypress. So is Alaska yellow cedar and Port Orford cedar. The cedar we have here is this kind of cedar, which is incense cedar, which is in a genus of its own, in the Calocedrus genus. 
People see cedar for sale and they think, oh, it's cedar, it's gonna be rot resistant. Well, the different types of cedars have different properties. In the case of incense cedar, the heartwood is rot resistant, but the sapwood, as we see, is not that rot resistant. I gotta move, this sun is cramping my style. This is the last part I cut off. Same deal, solid heartwood, rotten sapwood. If you saw a video I made a few weeks ago, I had a log, it was about this size. It had been laying on the ground for several years, maybe about as long as this one. And that Douglas fir log was more solid than this cedar log is. It only had a small ring of rot around it and most of it inside was still good. Most of that Doug fir log was more rot resistant than this cedar log, or at least a higher percentage of it. The actual heartwood in this cedar is probably more resistant than Doug fir. I don't know if that made any sense the way I said that, but the point is, Life is more complicated than it's cedar, therefore it's rot resistant. It depends on the cedar, depends on the species, depends on where the wood was cut out of it. Not all cedar is created equal. And if you were to go buy this kind of cedar at the store, chances are it would be a mixture of heartwood and sapwood. Some of it would be rot resistant, some of it wouldn't. But now the question is, is this log worth salvaging? When I get it to the mill, the reality is instead of being a log this big, it's only going to be a log that's about that big because that's the only good material we're going to get out of it, which makes this questionable whether it's worth messing with or not. It'd probably be a lot easier just to leave it here and not mess with it. But where's the adventure in that? And I do want to get these out of the way because I want to open this road back up and fix this washed out creek crossing. The creek washed out this crossing years ago, which accessed that part of the property over there. I'd like to get a culvert or a bridge in here so I can cross this again. Here we have some oyster mushrooms. Those are edible. Before it washed out, it had the old time logger style creek crossing where you take two logs parallel to the creek, then you put a log on top, and then the water flows in between those three logs. I could use these cedar logs to make one of those again, but I think the Department of Forestry and the Department of Fish and Wildlife would get angry with me if I did that. They get a little testy when it comes to creeks and it would probably just wash out again because this can get a lot of water in it when we have big rainstorms. Let's cut another log or two off of there. As it gets bigger, there'll be more heartwood to deal with. There's gonna be a lot of waste material to get to just a small amount of wood in these, but that small amount of wood is gonna be the prime heartwood. <laughs> I can get two more eight foot logs out of it, or maybe even an eight foot and a 10 foot. Since I won't be able to reach the other one with the forks, I wanna pull it out whole, but this tree is gonna be in the way. It's gonna bind up against it. That's another cedar tree that's dead. The top broke out of it. Probably when the other one fell, it knocked the top out. So I'll cut this one down. Maybe it will have some usable wood in it too. Probably not, but we'll see.
We have one more log left from this tree, the smallest one, but the heartwood in it is so small, it's only about six inches around, maybe seven. And this log's a little bit of crooked, so that's gonna cut into it too. So it's really questionable whether that log's even worth messing with. The deal with that whole big log just to get a little bit of heartwood out of it. Actually, this whole tree is questionable, but this one's extra questionable. So I'm just gonna leave that one for now. After I mill up the rest of the tree, if it just turns out that wood is so brilliant, then maybe I'll come back and get it. It's lasted this many years. It'll still be here and it'll still be okay. Then there's that smaller tree I cut down, which actually has a lot of heartwood in the butt. That has a good amount of heartwood, at least here in the butt swell. We'll drag it out, see what the rest of it looks like. That's no good. That has about four inches of heartwood and it has bug holes in it and a big crack right here. It's just too small to mess with. That's maybe five inches at the most. And this sapwood is all punky. Most of the wood in this cedar rotted. It's just a small amount of heartwood that was rot resistant. I don't think there's enough wood in here to be worth messing with. Maybe next time I have the tractor back here, we'll pile all the rest of this back in the corner for wildlife habitat, make a wildlife pile. And this top piece, I'll just leave it right there. It'll make a good squirrel bridge. Squirrels and foxes, they probably use it to cross the stream. I think this is all that's going to be worth salvaging. There's a lot of really tight grain in this heartwood. Maybe see better here how the sapwood's rotten, which is most of the volume. Well, stay tuned to the channel. On an upcoming video, we'll put these on the sawmill, see if we can get some good boards out of them. If this heartwood is as good as it looks on the ends, we'll get some prime heartwood lumber out of these. Either that or we'll find out that this was all a big waste of time. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.